more questions? Well, Sean, you guys feel like you did a better job of getting in the backfield uh, week, week one versus week zero? Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of the situations with this team, they allowed us to uh, get into the backfield by doing a lot of passing and uh, drop, it, drop back passes and stuff like that, allowing us to actually read the uh, pass. We had a good familiar uh, look on how the O-line looked and before they get into pass formations and stuff like that. So looking at their steps or whatever, their stances and whatever, kind of helped us get off the ball faster than we could. Do you enjoy going against the uh Saw a lot of this in the Big 12, an air raid offense this week. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I'm able to stretch out my hamstrings, if anything, just get out there and go up and fly by the uh, offensive tackle, the offensive lineman. Just being able to get off the ball is one thing I was looking for. You're taking back-to-back sacks there on the, you almost had another one. You almost okay. had a back-to-back sack. Yeah, today. yeah. Talk about that sequence. Yeah, yeah. Um, if it, if y'all don't like, one thing about me is that um, after one sack, I would want it to keep a a whole string going on. Um, so after that, it kind of just taught me what I had to do to get back there the next time, and immediately do it and see if it works. Um, it almost worked. He kind of dipped his shoulder and got out. So um, if anything, um, it helps a lot with future pass rushes, getting me comfortable with the situation. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, also a thing that, like, a few people say, uh, once you get one sack, there's more to come. So just getting that first sack, um, it don't even have to be the same game, but it'll be better if it was the same game. Just get a roll of sacks going on. Um, I'm pretty sure um, it goes for pass rushers as well. Why is why is it that way? Why is it? Why does one domino spawn? Yeah, um, I don't know. It's just like this adrenaline you have. Uh, once after your first sack, it just keeps coming. Depends on the person, too. Like, I know I'm like that. So whenever um, I know Garrett's like that, he got back there a few more times. Uh, I can't really speak for everyone, but myself. Oh, Sean, when, when you go into a game and, and you prepare and you know the offense might try to keep a tight end in or chip you, chip block you with the running mm-hmm. back. What goes into, you know, the preparation when you're not just facing an offensive tackle, I guess? Yeah, yeah. The one thing is, is you never see those chips coming, uh, especially if it's a running back. You usually see it if it's a tight end. He's right there. He's waiting for you. You can see his eye contact. He's probably looking at you sometimes. Uh, it'll let you know. But um, preparing for those types of games, we are more uh, focused on just going into the uh, the pick, the guy who's given the pick option or whatever. He's coming around, try to pick you off or just go into him. Don't try to shut him away. Um, spin off the inside to the inside. Use him as a catapult or whatever. Um, those things kind of helped a lot um, with the situation, just preparing for those types of situations. There's a lot more that goes into it. Um, a lot of teams are different. They'll get low, get you under the rib, all that kind of stuff. Is it's it like, frustrating when a, a running back actually connects and, and gets you and kind of throws you off your pass early? Um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. frustrating. <laughs> but, you know, you just got to focus on the next play. Hey, Osha, as much as you've prepared in the offseason to be ready for the season, what are some things through the first two games that you just kind of have to go through as you're still getting used to your teammates and you're getting used to how things are going? Um, like, just... What's another? Ask that again. I'm sorry. Just, what are some things that maybe the preseason couldn't prepare you for that okay. you just have to learn? You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, going against your own, I feel like there's a lot of different tackles out there, offensive linemen. From the team standpoint, it's like you have to get used to not only a, a me personally, I have to get used to a whole other conference, not just a new team. So coming in, um, you're playing a lot of guys who does who do things a lot more differently than the guys in the Big 12. Um, I've gone against these guys in practice often, so I've got a pretty good picture on those guys. And just coming out and just playing newer teams, it's another whole ball game, you know. So just getting out there and um, getting a read and just studying these guys and stuff like that, getting more uh, used to getting off the ball like I have the last game, it's – 
it's a work in progress, but um, I'm looking forward to everything else in the future. What is some of the, you know, understanding how your teammates are responding when the bullets are live or, or the terminology, is that sort of stuff, stuff that you have to learn during a game as well a little bit? The terminology, uh, like, like um, do you mean terminology and like? Just how you, how you communicate calls. Oh yeah, yeah. All that stuff, it kind of came to me pretty easily throughout the uh, the preseason process, going through fall camp and stuff like that. Um, I had to do a little things, a little bit of things with my play calls of how these newer plays were um, similar to the plays I had at TCU, but they have different names. So, uh, yeah, so all that stuff went into play. Um, it came pretty quickly because I did my, I talked to psychologists up here. So she just told me I'd use some type of weird uh, technique or whatever, but um, it, it's all pretty good and set forth. Defensively, you guys have been on the field for a lot of snaps through both of these games. Um, mm -hmm. How does the defense take that? Uh, I mean, is, is it an objective? Obviously, it's an objective to get off the field on third down, but what, what, what kind of approach do you guys have to uh, you know, maybe shorten up some of those offensive uh, series that you're going against? Yeah. Um, I say uh, one thing we do, uh, I know the D-line, from the D-line perspective, we try not to focus too much on what's going on behind us with the other guys um, because that's a lot of work to have on your shoulders. Um, so we all kind of try to focus on our, our, our jobs and let the guys behind us focus on their jobs and trying to get work into it like in, a, in, a, uh, in sync with each other and try to get off the field as soon as possible. So um, I can't really speak for what the def uh, the linebackers are doing, the safeties are doing. I can just speak only for like what the D-line is doing. What we're doing is trying to play our gaps, play our seams, don't create vertical seams, um, make, it, make the jobs easier for the linebackers and just play hard. What's this defense? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of times that um, we are too fast to coming out of our gaps. A lot of the times, the running backs like to go into one gap and wait, and they're pretty twitchy, so they'll wait, and then they'll, as soon as you jump out of your gap, they'll find a gap open. So just playing our job, that's what I'm just talking about then, just doing our job and just staying, sticking with it and making the jobs easier for everyone else out on the field is one of the things we have to work on. How hard is it to be patient in those moments? Um, sometimes it can be hard, you know, you just, you, I know a lot of guys, they're trying to play to win. Um, we are trying to play, but we can't forget to work together as well. It's kind of hard because once you're in the moment, you know, you want to get off the field as soon as possible, get the offense, the ball back. Um, those times, come in different measures to where you are making a bad decision, sometimes a good decision. Anything else for Oshon? Thanks, All right. Sean. No problem. Thank you, guys. Thanks.